Every successful individual knows that his or her achievement depends on a community of persons working together. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are nine present. And all the person Sorensen is excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on our agenda is the approval of uh, our minutes from our last city council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, with the clerk, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next is uh, resignation. City Attorney. The resignation, uh, Bill Feel submitting his resignation from the City Plan Commission, effective December 30, 2018. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. City Attorney, Mayor's appointments. Uh, so the Mayor is submitting the following appointments for your consideration to the uh, Sheboygan Squared Bid Board. Uh, Marcus Diedrich to fill the unexpired term of David Sanderson, whose term expires 12-31-2019. And the following appointments uh, beginning January 1, 2019 and expiring December 31, 2020. Rick Scroggins, Amy Horst, Eileen Simmons, Aaron Sloma, Jane Davis-Wood, Paul Rudnick, and Chad Pelishek. Those appointments will lie over. And then we have mayor's appointments. Uh, 1.6 is an appointment uh, by the mayor and the administrator pursuant to General Ordinance 6612.13, creating Section 2-419 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to the position of Director of Information Technology. We hereby recommend that Eric Bushman be appointed as the Director of Information Technology for the City of Sheboygan. And that appointment will lie over. And then one last one. 1.7 is also uh, an appointment to uh, the, the mayor uh, submits the following appointment for your consideration. Dave Hoffman to be considered for appointment to the City Plan Commission to fill the unexpired term of Bill Thiel, whose term expires April 20, 2020. And that will also lie over. Next, City Clerk, open forum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Joanne Scribner. <coughs> Could you state your name and address for us? Joanne Scribner, 3 Seneca Trail, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, 53081. Thank Joanne, you. could you move the mic closer? Thank you very much. You'll have five minutes. Okay. The last time I was here speaking at Common Council about this issue was on April 6th. I think I yelled at just about everybody here, from me or Mike to uh, Daryl Hoffman to probably the city attorney, and not Meredith, um, all their persons. Dave Beeble, etc. Didn't yell at the chief though. Okay. Save our armory. That's my topic. I know you're going to put it up for a referral to Finance Committee on Friday. One of my sources told me that. The last time I spoke, it was save our Sheboygan armory. The reason? It was built in 1941. Me. By the, by the WPA, which is a federal, you know, works program. So the guys who needed jobs at the time got jobs. It was depression time. The greatest generation built that armory. Sheboygan, I'm sorry, but it seems like some of you older persons, me or Mike, other people here, which... I won't name, want to destroy everything historical. I want to save things that are historical. That's why we have a historical museum on Erie Avenue, history. Save our Sheboygan Armory. Don't tear it down. What, another 
high-rise apartment building with rents 1000 to 6 1000 to 1600 or whatever $2000 a month most Sheboygan citizens can't afford that kind of high-rise sorry that's just the way it is not all not all of us are millionaires or thousandaires we don't have $40,000 a year income wish we did it's not there anyway <clears throat> Like I said, the greatest generation were some of the men who built that armory. Um, Bill Wangaman, you know him, used to be a member of the Shawin Common Council. Historian, extraordinaire. He, there's like, I have what, 46 pages, 46 pages of things, events that happened at the Shawin armory and auditorium yes it is memorabilia yes it's sentimental my main point tonight is please from Mayor Mike to Daryl Hopland to Chuck Adams to all of you all the persons put this on referendum for the April election so everybody in the city of Sheboygan can vote don't just take a wrecking ball to it you know that's a bunker that's one solid bunker it was built as a military bunker there are so many events that took place um, Cordettes the Don McNeil Breakfast Club was there Harlem Globetrotters I mean I could just go if I had an hour I'd go through this list of all the things that happened there wonderful events Lakeland College I graduated Lakeland the Lakeland College basketball games the Muskies the Muskies north-south basketball games teen dances the crescendos was the first teen dance back in I forgot my notes but it's all in here why are you going to destroy history again why why Chad why Dave why Mayor Mike why Daryl why Mary Lynn? Why? Save Cedarburg is a really nice town. It's got a lot of historical buildings. They don't tear down their historical buildings. Why does Ship Wagon? Save it. Put it on referendum. I'm thinking about calling, talking to Adam Payne. Maybe we should put it on the county ballot as well, not just Ship Wagon. <clears throat> county people use, used the armory. Back in 68, I was one of those Steiger girls. I was a lot thinner then. Pom-poms, the whole thing. Bill Steiger from Oshkosh. He died too young. Richard Nixon, I was here when he was here to speak. I don't understand why, except I know it's the money. It's always about the money. How about some sentimentality and some history? Save our Sheboygan Armory. Excuse me, Joanne, your time is up. Do I have one more minute? Please wrap up. Thanks. So, again, my plea is to Sheboygan Common Council, put it on referendum for the April ballot so that we can all, as the citizens of Sheboygan, vote on it. Otherwise, we're, otherwise the citizens are going to say, you don't care. 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 You don't care about the opinions of the residents. If you show that you care, put it on referendum so we can all vote, all citizens of Sheboygan, and maybe Sheboygan County too. Maybe I'll talk to Adam Keen, as I said. Referendum. 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 Put it on referendum so we can all vote. Referendum. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Thank you. Glenn Martin. <coughs> Good 
you state your name and address for us, please? Uh, my name is Glenn Martin, and my address is West 1198 Highway KK, Kakana, Wisconsin. And I'm representing a company called Statewide Raising. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Okay, uh, so I'm here as the other part of demolishing the building, not because all of a sudden I'm not here for public opinion, okay? That's immaterial, okay? I'm a contractor, and I'm a contractor that would like to bid on this job, okay? This job was bid out uh, several times, okay? Uh, several years ago, I asked, um, I, I got the thing right here, I got a paper for, uh, called the Daily Reporter where it says that all of a sudden we're going to be asking for bids for the Sheboygan Armory, okay? And I got this paper on, on uh, well, it's mailed out on the 13th. I, I read it on Monday. It says, and then there's a pre-qualification that was due on, I mean, a mandatory pre-bid that was due on the 13th, okay? And I, had, uh, and I called up Mr. Uh, Ramsey, I think that is his name, Bernard Ram, or, okay, and I asked him, why didn't you send me an email on this, okay? And he said, Glenn, we sent you an email on this. I says, no, you didn't. You didn't send me an email, okay? He says, well, well, it's too late. You can't bid on it anyway. So I went and seen him in person, okay, and I says to him, why wasn't I received the email? This is the second time this happened now. I says, he says, we'll put you on the bid list. I says, no, I don't want to be put on the bid list. I was asked to be put on the bid list and had changed my email address two years ago, and you didn't change it, okay? You didn't change my email. As a courtesy thing to all the bidders that bid on the project, they were sent an email saying is that you had to be this pre-bid qualification, okay, to be there to bid on the project. And I've done projects for, in the city, in the past, okay, I've tore down schools and houses and I've tore down a couple buildings in the downtown, not the downtown, in the old industrial flats area, okay, a lot of years ago. I've been doing this since I was, oh God, 1978, okay, I started working for people, 74 really. So that's all I'm asking for is the opportunity to bid. And so I'm kind of, kind of sat here is going, well, how am I supposed to bid a job when I'm not informed about the, the bidding process? And I understand that all of a sudden when you ask a person to change an email, how that process kind of gets lost or if a person asks you how to go ahead and change my phone number, it gets lost. But I'm going, how am I supposed to know this when all of a sudden I get a publication that's too late to even bid on the project? So I'd like the opportunity to bid on the project, okay? Uh, and I realize it's been bid before, but that's all I'm asking for is an opportunity. I can't say I'm gonna be low, or whatever it is. It's all I say is that I want an opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. I'd like to ask Shar Pakniak to come to the front, please. Tonight we have a proclamation to present in honor of National Mentoring Month. January is National Mentoring Month, celebrating the benefits of youth mentoring across the country. And whereas every day communities across the country, caring adults volunteer their time with mentoring programs to create consistent and supportive relationships with young people. At its most basic level, level, mentoring is successful in real life because it guarantees young people have an adult to turn to, that they have a guiding hand to help them in dealing with day-to-day -day challenges. At a more complex level, there is a powerful mentoring effect that ultimately makes our communities stronger. And whereas quality mentoring programs are proven to build relationships that improve school attendance, academic achievement, promote responsible decision making, provide skills to better navigate relationships at school and socially and at home. Whereas a report by Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership, found that young adults who are at risk of falling off track but who had a mentor are 55% more likely to enroll in college, 78% more, percent, uh, more likely to volunteer regularly in their communities, 90% are interested in becoming a mentor, and 130% are more likely to hold leadership positions. And whereas mentoring programs have shown to be an effect, effective in combating school violence and discipline problems, problems, substance abuse, incarceration, and truancy. Whereas, 
Uh, I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, by May, uh, as, as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby declare January of 2019 as National Mentoring Month in Sheboygan and call upon public officials, business and community leaders, and educators to encourage citizens of the city to observe this month with the appropriate ceremonies and activities and programs in order to recognize the men and women who serve as staff volunteers at quality mentoring programs and who help our young people find their inner strength and reach their full potential. Shar is here on behalf of uh, Horizon for Girls, uh, a great mentoring organization. We also have a robust uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters program, and also uh, we have other youth programs that supply mentoring. So, Shar, I'm very happy to present this proclamation to you. And I want to thank you for all the great work that your organization is doing, and also mention the good work that other organizations in our community are doing in mentoring. I'd also like to uh, just remind you that uh, the police department is uh, putting together their Citizen Academy uh, for this year. Um, their uh, Citizen Academy uh, will be an 11-week program and will run March 12th through May 21st. And they're uh, looking for applications to be into them by February 22nd. I know that some, like Rosemary Trester has said, she's gone through that in the past and what a great experience it was, So, and Jim Boren. Uh, so I hope that uh, other citizens will be interested in this. And I also want to let you know that uh, on the 29th of December, a new episode of Discover Wisconsin was on featuring Sheboygan in the fall and winter. Um, and uh, they have it on their website if you'd like to go and view that. But uh, this is part of our Visit Sheboygan effort to, uh, to get the word out. And that's one of the programs that they've uh, set up for that purpose. Thank you. Next, we'll go on with the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.3 through 2.4. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those items on the consent agenda are before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items uh, 3.1 and 3.2 be referred to the uh, Finance and Personnel Committee. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.5 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 219 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 145 of 1819 by Alderpersons Rinfleisch and Boren supporting uh, placing an advisory referendum question on the April of 2019 ballot to determine if the Wisconsin legislature should consider and pass legislation requiring all businesses to pay their fair share of property taxes by closing perceived loopholes in the assessment process and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Ryan Fleisch. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Alderperson Ryan Fleisch. <coughs> We've led the council to put this referendum on the ballot for the April, similar to what other cities and villages and town counties have been doing in the state. This is involved with the dark store situation where empty <coughs> stores are being assessed at a lower value than what generally the public is assessed at. So people are paying excess in personal property taxes because the businesses are getting a break on these particular pieces of property. So all the referendum they're doing is really kind of encouraging the uh, Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, and just to follow up on that, uh, there was an extensive article in the Sunday New York Times um, featuring the Wauwatosa mayor. Mike, you should have lobbied harder to get your picture in. Um, but I think that really sets out the, the breadth and depth of this problem, which and unfortunately our legislators just aren't listening to us. 
and so building support within communities I think is extremely important and so I will wholeheartedly vote for this and then I think part two of that is an educational campaign to let people know exactly you know what is this all about nobody I mean, it's hard to figure out what a dark store is and, and so forth so I think that we need to be engaged in that as well thank you for the comments Alder, Jim Alderperson Bourne <coughs> Thank you very much. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, not to continue to um, review this subject, but it, I do agree with the fact that we need to take this to referendum. Also because of the fact that as more and more brick and mortar um, disappear um, because of you know, online shopping and things like that, if this, if this situation is not addressed and understood by, by our citizens, it's going to continue to uh, cripple uh, cities all over. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage. Nine eyes. Motion passes. Under um, item number six, general ordinances, um, item 6.1 and 6.2 will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Under other matters received after the agenda is published, I'll turn it over to the City Attorney. Thank you, uh, Mayor. 7.1 <coughs> is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2019, December 31, 2019, and June 30, 2020. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. 7.2 is a resolution by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing advertising for bids for the Mead Public Library Plaza project. That would be referred to the Public Works Committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion. Would clerk, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.